This is just the two of us with justice and joy. joy. Here we talk about marriage, engagement, relationship, and everything that has to do with family and love. And we also do hookups. We can hook you up to somebody. Yeah, yeah. And as you know, every, every day, day is a marriage anniversary. Yeah, and today we're having, hey, my friend, my brother, <laughs> he's been on these shows a yeah, couple of times. Of times. And, uh, is one man you need to hear from a lot to learn a lot, about a lot yeah. a lot a lot to learn it is fun to be with he's fun to be with <laughs> a reverend father a doctor <laughs> a priest a priest but today he's going to be talking about the Netflix anthropology conference 2023 coming up october, october 28 and 29. 29 hey what are you waiting for go get your ticket go get your ticket the rush is on the rush the, is hey don't be late don't be late don't be late get your ticket now on the next one i verse. promise you you're going to learn a lot it's, a lot of information uh, there are some things that are strange to me but I'm sure you attend the conference. So many things will be revealed to you. So many informations about the Netflix you're going to be taught. You're going to it's a lot of experience. Hey, you're going to hear about learn. aliens. Aliens. The giants. giants. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Caleb and the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the Wens go spy the, the land. Yes. And they said they, they are like they are like cop up. Before them, the giants. giants. Hearing a lot from my friend and brother. Dr. Dr. David, David William Parry. The next voice you'll be hearing will be that of Dr. Dr. Don't David Go Nowhere. Friends, a felicitous and joyful afternoon to you. May the peace, wisdom and love of the gospel be in your lives this day and always. And that's said from the bottom of my heart. I am the Reverend Dr. David William Parry. I am a Catholic priest, not a Roman Catholic priest, but a full Catholic priest with the old Catholic Apostolic Church. It's a long story. So many some invites. Let's talk about it in Nigeria. Let's talk about it in Africa. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, let's get together and have some fun. My favourite phrase at the minute. Uh, but that's not why I'm uh, here with you today. We're not talking about church history or the different divisions uh, that sadly we've all taken in the body of Christ into different types of Christian witness. Uh, my view is we all need to stand together like never before, but as I say, that's a separate issue. I've been invited today by Justice Duru, uh, the remarkable joy, and the team of just the two of us to say a few words about the Nephilim Anthropology Conference. I'm sick of talking to you about it. Why aren't you buying tickets? Oh my heavens, take the shirt from my back and just ignore everything I say. Because you're the ones that will be missing out if you don't attend this year. Justice will be there. What's wrong with you? Don't you have any respect in yourself and the people around you? This is an exciting opportunity. Come and, come and, come and book your tickets. Come and visit us. Come and be there at the Nephilim Anthropology Conference 2023 in Glasgow, Scotland on the 28th and the 29th of October. Why should you be there? Ha ha ha. Well, um, we are trying to unearth, to dig up a very great truth, a truth that's sometimes hidden in plain sight, but a truth that's hidden nonetheless. It started overall, I think, looking back in 2013, um, I'm also a British theatrical and I was between projects, uh, between resting between engagements, as, as they used to say. And, uh, you know, I, I, those are the times when I'm not being a minister and I'm not sort of involved in theatre. When it, I get the opportunity, I get the chance to look at other types of project. So we thought way back then, wow, let's put something on about the Nephilim. Uh, giants, crystal skulls, UFOs. I've actually seen a UFO, so I know they exist. I'm not saying what they are, but I've seen one. Um, and, you know, all this stuff, anomalous phenomena, as they say. Stuff that we sort of know is there, but it doesn't really fit easily into the sciences, into the arts. You know, what is it? What's it doing? Heaven's sake. But it's there. So I thought that would be a good idea. The idea, curiously, came up in a series of conversations I had with the exceedingly famous uh, Estonian author, Vladimir Wiedemann, um, an old friend of mine. 
Uh, now, when he was a young whippersnapper, they were talking about what they were calling then the new anthropology. Um, that was, I think, at Moscow State University. And, you know, what they were saying to the West, these are the days of the Cold War. These are the days of the Iron Curtain. You know, there was no cultural movement to speak of between the West and the Soviet Union. Very, very sad. Sad for us all because it held us back. It held progress back. And there's progress even in our study of the scriptures, uh, maybe especially there and recently, but more of that later. Um, you know, they started realizing over in that part of the world that human evolution, uh, don't be horrified at that word, uh, wasn't what people said it was. You know, there were giant skeletons. There were tiny skeletons of human beings. There were some that were barely human. There were some weirdly that looked very advanced. So what was going on? Uh, my dear friend and the scholars of uh, that particular institution, that particular university, wanted to talk to Western scholars about it. It didn't really happen. Even though the bones of the animal, the bones of the beast, the bones of these people were actually in front of them. If you want to know something, as they used to say in Africa, look at the bones of the animal. They were looking at it, the human animal. And it didn't make sense. It was too complex, too too sophisticated. Too, you know, there were too many examples of other things. It didn't happen at that time. But my dear friend Vladimir was one of the scholars involved. Um, he went on to do other things. But uh, he will be speaking with us at this year's conference. And you can ask him in person what they were. Uh, and partly also uh, being a translator for the BBC. But that's another issue. That's another side topic. Um... We decided, wouldn't that be a great idea for a conference looking at bloodlines, you know, topical stuff, stuff that lots of people want to discuss, lots of people discuss very badly and lots of people fantasise about. There's no point robbing humanity of something marvellous by falling into mere fantasy. You know, fantasy has its place in human life uh, and it's interesting, but it is not fact, it is not reality. And, you know, just saying, oh, you know, that's his story and this is my story is actually very ignorant and does us no service as a human race at all. Uh, there are facts out there. There are truths out there with a capital T. And let's learn about them to take our rightful place in this world and in this cosmos. The future's ahead of us. That said, you know... <sighs> We were going to put this thing on. It collapsed. The conference collapsed. The initial gathering collapsed within a few weeks. Um, I'll tell you something odd. A dear friend of mine, the Reverend Jim Wilhelmson, an evangelical minister in the, in the United States, said to me, Oh, Nephilim, Nephilim, Nephilim. They don't like being discussed. Be careful, David. They will do their best to make sure this doesn't happen. And I, I must admit, I was a little, do, a little too dismissive, uh, dismissive, teeth falling up, too dismissive of Jim on that occasion. I thought, oh gosh, you evangelicals again. In two weeks later, and it was over. Um, money problems started, other problems started, and we simply couldn't go ahead. We revived this conference years later. Three years ago, <clears throat> as an idea, the Christian community, I felt, I still feel, needs to get together. We need to discuss our resources, our wisdom, our teachings anew. We need to look at what we've been presented with afresh and look at biblical history, biblical uh, archaeology, biblical cultures, you know, the times of that period, the histories of that period, the poetries of that period, and... The revelations that were given to us then that bear upon this time of the present. So Vladimir and Jim, my love to you both uh, um, and I hope you still participate in this year's conference. I know Vladimir is. We're trying to get Jim into it somehow uh, because you know what we've managed to do is we've revived it. This is year three. This is our fourth meeting and we have a slightly different panel every year. I, I'm told Justice uh, Justice Duru will actually be physically present with us in Scotland this year. Very exciting. Um, and, you know, we, we, we're trying to get together our expertise, all the different types of expertise, to work out what is going on. 
We're a proper academic panel. We've got people who are real mainstream scholars saying this is what the sciences know, no more and no less. We've got people in the middle saying, ah, oh, but that can be stretched. You know, look at this fact and that fact and these experiences and those texts. And that is maybe for me the most exciting bit in the middle. We've got wild cards at the side. You want to say, well, forget all that. Think outside the box because the world simply isn't what you think it is. Never say no. You don't know for certain. So we've got the wild, the wonderful, all the way down to serious scholarship. Uh, because we've got a panel this year, we have a permanent panel, uh, and we have also visiting guests. I'm hoping Justice takes his place on the permanent panel, but we'll see about that. Uh, let's just go through a few of the panellists this year. We've got David Shaler, for a start, um, who got in lots of trouble years back with MI5 uh, as a whistleblower, um, telling us all in this country how much... We were being misled, uh, not only officially, but by the secret intelligence agencies, but the secret services. Um, he is a remarkable man and wants to say his piece on what he thinks the Nephilim are from a very biblical perspective and the perspective of a man, of a man who's got great sensitivities. He can tell you what that means uh, himself. The incredible Maria Wheatley, who studies earth energies, prehistories, ancient you know, the ancient peoples of Britain, and that, that maybe that something that they thought was a science, you know, maybe they dealt with earth energies on a level we simply can't remember now. It was so long ago. But she'll be dealing with the ancient monuments, stone circles, and the types of history that no one really denies, but are half forgotten. We've got the incredibly controversial Leo Leon Zagami, a good friend of mine, um, known to you all, I suppose, through InfoWars um, and his uh, seven, is it eight books or seven? His uh, revelations about the Illuminati, uh, he says very clearly, he was a high-ranking, high-ranking, there's a fraudulent slip, high-ranking Freemason and a member of the Illuminati himself. Therefore, maybe we've got a few things from the horse's mouth. In his particular case, we've got uh, the wonderful Alison... Shane's Dunlop, uh, who has our own podcast, the ADX Files, a bit like the X Files, but Alison Files. Uh, and she not only is an author, uh, uh, I think a Wiccan, I'm not entirely certain, but she's uh, also one of the leading people behind the Scottish UFO conference every year. I think she wants to talk about that side. You know, ancient aliens is on everybody's mouths at, you know, at the minute. You know, everybody's talking about, is that a theory or not? She wants to talk about that side of it and see what the connections possibly are from that angle. Don't write it off. Remember, even the great psychologist Carl Jung wrote a book about UFOs. And as I say, I've seen one. So that's not particularly big news for me. Uh, we're going to uh, Pam Geese, who is a Gnostic bishop, who wants to talk about the Nephilim and giants from a much more subtle angle. Are they astral? Are they etheric? You know, are these beings meant to be physical in a way that we think is physical, but maybe beings on other planes and other realms, they think is physical, but we don't? Well, that, that is an incredibly interesting, interesting way of looking at it. We've got Alan Cox, the psychic, the healer, who is also a priest in the old Catholic Apostolic Church. He'll be uh, talking about his interaction, his experiences as a healer fighting against these terrible energies. We've got Andrew Goff, the alternative uh, scholar. He's a scholarly man, but you know he doesn't deal with the mainline materials he, uh, of the History Channel. He's been on Gaia TV. He's been on the Discovery Channel. I think he's a wealth of information, and he wants to talk about his personal view uh, mutants, aliens, hollow earths, flat earths, don't go for that one myself, but you know, uh, all of these different theories on what they might mean when, when you get together in a hub, is there a common denominator? Ah, evil forces trying to hide great truths to us, the basic truths, maybe they are. Jeff Lippmann, a friend of the conference from the beginning, uh, who has his own podcast show over in America, 
Um, I'll let you talk to him about that in person. Debbie Elliott, who is a podcaster, an anthroposophist. I dip my fingers in there sometimes. Uh, uh, and an author, a fellow author. Uh, she'll be talking about her understanding of the Nephilim from an anthroposophical point of view. And the remarkable painter and illustrator, Philip Verzov, who will be giving us uh, 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 an exhibition of his works and the role giantism, if these beings were giants, planes and other realms, uh, uh, what that plays, planes and other realms, they think is physical, but we don't. Well, wow. that, that is an incredibly interesting interesting way of looking at it. We've got Alan Cox, the psychic, the healer, who is also a priest in the old Catholic Apostolic Church. He'll be uh, talking about his interaction, his experiences as a healer, fighting against these terrible energies. We've got Andrew Goff, the alternative uh, scholar. He's a scholarly man, but you know he doesn't deal with the mainline materials. He, uh, of the History Channel, he's been on Gaia TV, he's been on the Discovery Channel. I think he's a wealth of information and he wants to talk about his personal view of mutants, aliens, hollow earths, flat earths. Don't go for that one myself. But, you know, uh, all of these different theories on what they might mean when, when you get together in a hub. Is there a common denominator? Ah, evil forces trying to hide... Great truths to us. Any basic truths, maybe they are. Jeff Lippman, a friend of the conference from the beginning, uh, who has his own podcast show over in America. Um, I'll let you talk to him about that in person. I'm good at it. Hmm. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I am sure you learned something. I did. I learned a lot. What are you waiting about. for? Book your ticket okay. now. Go Book get your ticket your now. Tickets. Go get your ticket. Now. I'm going to be in that conference. I'm going to be in that conference. It's going to be a blast. You are going to be there, or both of us. Hey. We, just the two of us, with Justice and Joe, we are going to be there. Hey, I'm going to be there maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> this year, I'm going to be there alone. Next year, you're coming. Uh, it, it's, the no. conference is going to wow you. I don't. Mm -hmm. Get your ticket now. The rush is on. Get your ticket. Get a ticket. Like you know, let's run away from here. Yeah. Like you know, before running away from here, we we'll always do like this. Please like, like share, share, and subscribe. Uh -huh.